Hello everyone. Welcome to another second step lesson. So today we're going to play the idea machine game again. So we played it last week and I'll go over the rules again. It's very simple. So Miss Brianna is going to give a topic and then she's going to set her timer. It's right here for 10 seconds. You can't see it, but it says 10 seconds. So you're going to have 10 seconds to try and come up with as many words as you can that fit the topic. Okay. So try and do, try to think of as many words that match the topic. For example, let's say Miss Brianna said food. So I could say tacos, cheeseburgers, French fries. Um, what else? What else? What else? A hot dog. So these are all foods, right? So they match the topic. So we're going to play only two rounds today. And remember, please keep your mics muted unless your teacher says that you can unmute. But for this game, we're just going to um, keep our mics muted. So you can talk out loud. You can use self-talk if you need to, to help you think of some things and make sure you keep track of how many you're thinking of. Okay. So let's start. Um, our first topic is going to be types of fruit. Okay, so think of some types of fruit. Ready, set, go. Okay, that was 10 seconds. Okay, so Miss Brianna came up with six. That was kind of hard though. So I thought of strawberries um, apples, oranges, pears. Um, I also thought of grapes and I think the last one was kiwis. <laughs> yeah. So those are, are, those are the first Miss Brianna thought of. So you guys at home, I want you guys to, um, it's okay if you got more and it's okay if you got less, we're just trying to get our brains nice and warmed up. Okay. So our next topic, this is going to be our last one. Um, next topic is going to be, hmm, how about we'll do cartoons. Ready? Favorite cartoons. And go. Okay, that's the timer. Our seconds are up. Miss Brianna was only able to come up with four. I found that hard thinking of cartoons. That was hard for me. So hopefully my friends at home, maybe you thought of more, maybe you thought of some less. Um, I'm trying to remember what I thought of. I remember um, I watched Arthur as a kid. I don't know if they still play that on TV, but Arthur, I thought of Peppa Pig. I thought of um, Daniel Tiger. I'm not sure. I think they still play that. And what was my last one? Oh, it was Avatar. That's considered a cartoon, I think. <laughs> okay, well, good job. Thank you guys for participating. You guys thought up of a lot of things. And now your brain is ready for the lesson. So last time, Puppy and Snail had a problem about playing together at recess, remember? So they've made a plan to play together today. But now they have a new problem. Let's find out what's going on. Puppy and I want to play together at recess, but I want to play hide and seek. Woof, and I want to play tag. At first, we were frustrated with each other, but then we calmed down. Let's tell Puppy and Snail the first steps they should take to solve their problem. Okay, so who remembers the first step? I'll give a hint. It starts with the S. Right. So all my friends who are thinking, say the problem. I know that's a lot to remember. Say the problem. But yeah, our first step is say the problem. Okay, puppy and snail, that's the first step. Say the problem. Okay, Puppy and I want to play two different games at recess. Okay, good, Snail. Now, class, let's tell them the next step. I'll give a hint. It starts with a T. The 
The next step is think of solutions. Yes, think of solutions. Okay, puppy and snail? Yes, puppy and snail need to think of lots of solutions. Let's leave them here to do that while we continue with our lesson. And we'll check back in with them later. Okay, so today we're going to learn the last two steps to problem solving. But first, let's sing along with a problem solving song. So last time we listened to it, this time Miss Brianna is going to teach you guys some movements to do along with the song. So the first movement is when we hear S, we are going to cup our hands to our mouth. So S, and this is what we're going to do, cup your hands to your mouth. And then for T, you're going to touch your hands to your forehead. You can do it with one hand or two hands. And then E, we're going to roll our hands around each other. And then all, P, excuse me, we're going to raise our hands in the air, okay? So I know that's a lot to remember, so we'll go over it one more time. So if you hear S, cup your hands. T, touch your forehead. E, roll our hands. And then P, we're going to raise our hands in the air, okay? So let's listen. trouble and I don't know what to do. There are four problem solving steps that always help me through. Number one, it's the yes step. S, the problem. What is the problem? Number two, it's the T step. G, solutions. What can we do? Number three, it's the E step. E, explore consequences. What might happen? Number four, it's the P step. P, pick the best solution. What will work the best? So let's all remember the four problem solving steps. Let's say them one time over so we never forget. One, two, three, four. S, T, E, E, E is the yes step. help me through because I am a problem solver 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 I say I am a problem solver 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 S T E D S T E D S T E D S T E D S T E D S T E D S T E D S T E D Okay, good job. That was hard. The song went very fast. Maybe I was the only one who had trouble. But good job, my friends. Thank you for participating. And let's get back to our story. Last time we watched a problem between Brianna, and that's her right here, and Anne, okay, the girl in the yellow shirt. Does anyone remember what their problem was? Think about that for a minute. It's kind of in the picture, right? So the problem was they both wanted to use the monkey bars, but only one person at a time is allowed. So let's watch the scene again to remember the problem and how the two girls started to work through it.
know you were here. Awesome, huh? What? You think a kid like me can't do monkey bars? I'm good. Lots of practice. A bunch of kids who go to this school love the monkey bars, too. Have you been out here at recess? Everybody wants to play on them. What would be cool is if they had 20 monkey bars, but they don't. They only have one. That can cause problems, like last week. I don't want to brag, but it's a good thing I was here to help. There's these two girls, Brianna and Anne. Everybody knows they're best friends. They even have friendship bracelets that are exactly alike. But they aren't exactly alike. Brianna is really good at hopscotch. And Anne is really good at monkey bars. She almost never falls off. And the rule on the playground is, it's your turn until you fall off. So, what's the problem? I've been running a long time. Recess is almost over. I'm never going to get a turn. I'm breaking my record! <laughs> it's not fair. Uh-oh. Hey! Oh, maybe we be legend now. It's all your fault. No, it isn't. You're supposed to take turns, and you never do. I do, too. No, you don't. I've been waiting a million years, and you won't get off. I didn't even see you. As you can see, these girls had a problem. You were in my way. You saw me, but you wouldn't let go. Okay. I think you both need to calm down. Then they worked on saying the problem without blaming. Okay, this is good so far. You calm down and you can say the problem without blaming. So what's the problem again? We both want to go on the monkey bars at the same time. But only one person at a time is allowed. That is a problem. So what do you do next? Think of solutions. Yes, thinking of solutions that are safe and respectful. So, why don't you give it a try? Maybe you could take a break from monkey bars and let me have a turn. Or you could go play something else while I keep going. What are some other solutions? I guess I can keep waiting in line. Maybe when I get on the monkey bars, I can count to 100 and then give you a turn. Even if I haven't fallen off. You're really thinking. Okay, so first, Brianne and Anne calmed down. Then they said their problem. And their problem was, and this is what they said, we both want to use the monkey bars, but only one person at a time is allowed. So once they named their problem, next they thought of lots of solutions. So what were some of those solutions? Miss um, Brianna can remember they mentioned maybe Anne could take a break and then go back to the monkey bars. Um, maybe Brianna can play something else. Um, or maybe Brianna can go back to her place in line and just wait her turn. Or Anne could count to 100 and then give up her turn even if she hasn't fallen off the monkey bars yet. So we're gonna look at our problem poster. So this is it, oh, it's upside down, whoops. So this is our problem solving steps. So here they are walking up the steps and we have our um, our acronym STEP, right? Step. Okay, so Brianne and Anne have already done the first two steps. So they did the first one, which is S and that's say the problem. And then they also did T, which is think of solutions. So now they need to do E, and E stands for explore consequences. So a consequence is something that could happen if you pick a solution. It can be positive or it can be negative. So for example, um, Ms. Brianna will give the example like, if you 
choose or don't choose to do your homework, right? So if you choose to do your homework, you usually get positive consequences, like maybe um, you get a sticker on your homework or your teacher marks you for turning in your homework and that's a good thing. Um, you get good grades, but if you don't do it, then usually you have to make it up later or your, your grades aren't very good. Um, and, you know, maybe your teacher has to ask you where your homework is. So these are all consequences. So those were positive consequences if you do your homework and then some negative consequences if you don't do your homework, right? So let's think about Brianna and Anne's problem. So let's say if Anne stops her turn and goes to the end of the line, then what would happen? Think about that for a moment. I'm gonna put the poster down. So if Anne stops a turn and goes to the end of the line, then what might happen? Okay, Miss Brianna has some ideas. I think that maybe um, if Anne stops her turn and goes to the end of the line, then you know she can kind of get a break rest her arms, and then some of the other turn kids, excuse me, can get a turn. So maybe that might make Anne feel better. And then Brianna would get her turn, so she would be happy too, right? Yeah, so that's one idea, but you know, some of you may have other um, ideas about what the consequences might be. Um, but let's think of a new one, let's say, um, if Brianna plays with someone else instead of waiting, then what would happen? Think about that. Okay, I thought about it and I'm thinking that if she plays with someone else, then maybe she could have some fun. Brianna could have some fun with another friend and doing something else that she likes, you know, instead of the monkey bars and finding something else fun to do, right? Also, Anne would get to continue on the monkey bars and maybe she'd be able to break her record. So that could be another solution. Okay, so now that we thought of a few, Let's look to the last step, and that's P. Let's pick the best solution. So I want you guys at home, my friends at home, to pick one in your head. So think about it. Think about what idea you would pick. And then we're going to watch and see what Brianna and Ann picked. Okay. You've come up with a lot of solutions. Next comes the E step, which is... Exploring consequences. That means figuring out what will happen if you choose a solution. So, give it a try. If you take a break from monkey bars, then I won't be so happy. But if you go play something else, then I won't be very happy. If I count to 100 and then give you a turn, Will it be happy? Yes. Then I won't have to wait so long. I'd be pretty happy too. Let's fix that one. Together, you pick the best solution. So, there's only one thing left to do. Let's go back to the monkey bars. I'll show you both how to hang out for a long time. Okay, let's go. Hey, you know, I'm the best at monkey bars. No, you're not. Okay, so we heard the girls talk about what solution they ended up picking, and they had actually different feelings than what Miss Brianna thought that they might, right? So Miss Brianna thought maybe that Brianna playing something else might be a good solution, but she didn't feel that way, right? Since she was able to talk to her friend Anne and tell her that she didn't like that idea. And so since they both talked about it, they were able to pick a solution that they both could be happy with, right? So that was very good problem solving on their part, right? So now 
we are going to practice exploring consequences and picking a solution with snail and puppy. So let's get back to snail and puppy. Okay, well, you two, did you think of some solutions to your problem? Yes, but we need to think about some conse consequences. Oof, yes, that's the word that means what could happen. Can the class help us? Okay, if I tell puppy to play hide and seek with me, or we won't be friends anymore, then what might happen? Hmm, friends, what do you think would happen? I would think Puppy would probably not be very happy with that, right? Maybe his feelings would be hurt because Snail doesn't want to be his friend anymore just because he doesn't want to play hide and seek, right? So that's probably not a good solution. They'll probably get into a fight, right? Woof. Okay, what if I yell and call Snail a scaredy cat if he won't play tag? Woof. Then... What might happen? Okay, let's think about that. Hmm. Well, I don't think calling Snail a scaredy cat, calling him a name, would be very nice, right? It probably would hurt his feelings, and then they won't want to play with each other. And so both of them will have to play by themselves, right? Okay. If we decide to play hide and seek for the first half of the recess and then play tag for the last half of the recess, then what might happen? Okay, let's think about that. I think that might be a good idea because Snail will be happy because he got to play hide and seek and then Puppy would also be happy because he got to play tag. Woof. If we decide to play wall ball at recess instead of either tag or hide and seek, then what might happen? Hmm. Think about that. Hmm. I think, I mean, that could work, but I think both you guys want to play your games, right? Yeah, so Snail really wants to play hide and seek and Puppy really wants to play tag. So, I mean, you guys could play wall ball, but I think that both you guys might not be happy playing wall ball. My friends at home, what solution do you think would work best for puppy and snail? Think about that for a minute. Hmm. Well, after thinking about it, what do you guys, Puppy and Snail, think that you would you want to do? Well, I don't know about you, Puppy, but I think that maybe if we just split our recess in half and first we play tag and then we play hide and seek, then I think that would make us both happy. Would you be happy with that? Woof! Yeah, I think I would be happy with that. Okay, friends. Well, it looks like Puppy and Snail were able to problem solve. Okay, so today you learned the last two problem solving steps. Let's say them all together. Let's point at the poster. So we learned our first step, which is S, and that stands for say the problem. And then we learned the T step last week, which was Think of solutions. And now today we learned our last two steps. So what does E stand for? It stands for explore consequences. And then what does P stand for? It stands for pick the best solution. Okay, awesome job. So using the problem solving step, step, excuse me, can help you get along better and to have more fun with friends. Well, good job to all my friends at home. Thank you for joining me for another second step lesson. And I will see you guys again next week. Bye.